Hi guys, my name is Steven and welcome to video number 10 in this new video in this new video series where I'm building a login registration system uh, using CodeIgniter. So what I'll be doing in this video is I'm going to what, we're, what we've done so far is we've been able to successfully validate our sign up form. Um, so now what we want to do is I can delete this. This is the email that I'll be sending it to eventually. Um, but what happens once the form validation has run? Um, that'll be the main topic for this video. Uh, but there's a couple more things I want to do first with the actual validation. Like for one, I want to I want to describe this uh, is unique function a little bit better. Um, you can see right now if I it checks um, whatever the email that I entered in with the users table and the email field in that. Now right now, hello at welcome.com should still be entered from when we uh, <coughs> from when we uh, built our sign up version or sign up form or login form sorry so now if I try and sign up with the same email address that's already registered I should get an error it says that e the email field must contain a unique value now um, this is great that means that it's successfully checking and if we want to check that we can actually go into our users table and then Okay, so we will go into browse our users table. And you can see here it's checking the users table, the email field, and right now we only have one entry and that one entry just so happens to be hello at welcome.com. So therefore we can't sign up with it again. Um however, this uh this message right here, the email field must contain a unique value, that doesn't make a lot of sense to the end user. So what we can do actually is we could uh, rename this the same way that we renamed those callback um, up here the callback message I believe that was right uh, validate credentials yeah oh well I'm not worried about it I'll just show you what I mean um, we can set the the message the error message for the is unique function or rule by going this form underscore validation set message and this takes two parameters the first is the actual function that we want to in this case override the message for and then the second part is the actual message so that email address already exists okay so now if I save this and run it and try this again password and password that email address already exists because um, it had a, a message for the is unique function but we overwrote it by doing this um, yeah so that's how the is unique function works um, this, the second thing I want to do is just get rid of this you shall not pass line if, if they don't pass because we don't actually need that and uh, we also don't need this either because we're about to because uh, we're about to write what actually happens once the validation is successful and uh, in short essentially there's a couple things we want to do we want to generate a random key and I'll explain why in a second we want to send an email to the user and that will actually have a link to another to a registration form contain with the key appended onto it and you'll see what I mean by that in a second um, and then we actually, we actually want to add them to the temp database okay so let's do it we'll generate a random key by uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this we go key equals um, md5 so we're going to encrypt whatever is inside this uh, or md5 hash it sorry and then essentially all we need to do is a function called unique ID and that's actually this will gen generate a random ID number and then we're going to md5 hash that so it uh it creates a pretty I don't it's not a super high security feature it this by far is not the best way to do it but for the purposes of this video tutorial it'll do um, Essentially, it's just ensuring that anyone who signs up 
won't have the same unique key. And uh, there's obviously other ways we could check that, but we're not going to in this video. This is just going to be good enough. Um, the next thing we want to do is auto load the, or not auto load, just load the email library. So we'll go this load library email. And now we can start actually fulfilling some of these functions that the email library requires when it's been called. Um, so we can go, we'll set the from. So we'll set this email from. Now this will take two parameters. The first one will be like me at mywebsite.com or whatever your website is. Mywebsite.com. And the second is your actual name. So for me, I'll just put Steven. The next thing is the this email to, I believe. Yeah. So in this case, we actually want to send the email to them. Like, um, so we can actually grab that email the email address that they specified in the form, which we've already actually validated is a uh, is a valid email address. So we can go this input post email. So it'll send it to them. Um, next we can actually, we can do the subject. I'll just copy this line. And then we just specify a, uh, a string in here of the subject of the email. So in this case, it'd be confirm your account. Perfect. And lastly, we want to do the message. So before I actually send the message, I want to actually create a message variable and fill it up. <clears throat> so the message is going to be an HTML message, and so which means the content of the of the email will actually be HTML format. And I'm pretty sure that the the email library, when it's loaded automatically, what it'll do is it'll configure it to send the message as plain text. So we actually, on this topic, we need to actually change the how the email library is configured. And we can do that by passing an array um, as the second parameter when we load the email library with some configuration options. So in this case, um, we just specify the mail type. We set that to HTML. Um, by default, this is set to text. And you can find that on the CodeIgniter uh, user guide on the website. Um, however, we want this to be HTML so that we can send a tags, uh, more specifically a link containing this specific key that we just created. So um, we'll just give them a nice little p tag message. Thank you for signing up or something like that. Close the p tag. I'll go message dot equals, so I'll just append or prepend um, this to whatever I'm about, about to type. Um, then we'll create another p tag, then an a tag inside of that, href equals. I'll just close the a tag because I always forget to close it afterwards. So click here to confirm your account. Okay, and now in here, I want to break open with double quotes again and depend on the base URL, which is a function of the URL helper that I auto loaded at the beginning of the series. And then after that, after this double quote, I want to specify another, uh, the main controller, and then say, we can call this function register user or something like that. Register underscore user. Okay, and then lastly, we want to actually pass the key. So this is going to be a link back to our website, because this base URL will actually be, we're, I'm sending them a link back to my website, um, the main controller, the register function, which we're about to write, and we're going to be passing in this third parent, this um, third segment of the URI, as, and it'll be the key. Um, so just explaining what's actually going to be going on here. They'll get an email containing a link, right? And they'll click on the link. That link will take us back to our website, to the register user um, function, and then it's going to receive a parameter of this key. Um, then we can actually grab that, grab that key and compare it to the temp user's uh, table on the database. And then it, if, if we can find it, then we'll 
actually take them from that temp users, we'll grab all their information out of there, and we'll put it into the permanent users. Um, and then once, once they're in the permanent users, then we'll actually remove all their old data from the temp users database. So um, I think that's it for the message. We can actually go ahead and send the message now. This email message, and then we'll just pass in the message variable that we just created. <coughs> Perfect. Okay, now we can try and send the email. So we'll go this email send. And uh, why don't we actually check and we'll say if if email send, then echo the email has been sent. Else failed. Okay, let's try it out. So I'll just refresh this and we'll start from scratch. We'll say um, uh, PHP login tut at gmail.com. Password is password. And we'll click sign up. The email has been sent. Okay, so I'm already logged in over here. And you can see we've got our email. Confirm your account. Thank you for signing up. Click here to confirm your account. So we'll click, we'll click it, and there we have, we're actually going to, to the website, um, main register user, and then this unique validation key that was randomly generated. So every single user that tries that signs up through our website will have a, a different um, validation key. And that's the point of this, so that we can actually grab this key from like in the register user function that we're about to create <clears throat> and we can compare it to the temp users database so I think I went a little bit over time in this video I'm going to continue um, by adding as well as sending them an email I want to add them to the temp users database so um, we'll do that in the next video thanks for watching